The gaming industry is rapidly collapsing. We are beginning to witness a crash similar to the 1980s and is absolutely beautiful. Today's video comes from Dr. Disaster. His channel will be linked in the description so you can go check him out and support him. Watch the end of the video to fully understand the implications of this collapse and how it's going to affect the relationship between men, women, society, and everything going forward. And now let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. What's up, Space Pirates? This is your captain, the Dread Pirate Doctor Disaster, and it's been a minute since we have discussed Ubisoft and how they're doing as a company, I thought, with all the damage that they've sustained over the past few months, maybe we should do a wellness check and, oh, would you look at that. How are you? Not great, Bob! Rumor is that the studio for Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, has been dismantled. That sure as hell isn't a good sign. It's not exactly an indicator of a healthy company. But what about Assassin's Creed Shadows? I mean, this was supposed to be about the biggest release the franchise has ever seen. Fans have been clamoring for an Assassin's Creed game to be set in Japan ever since the IP was created, and oh, I see. Well, that's fucking. Not good. It sure seems that absolutely nothing is going well for Ubisoft these days. They have recently dealt with embarrassing sales numbers for Star Wars Outlaws, plummeting stock prices, employee strikes, and pushing Assassin's Creed Shadows back from November to February. And now we are hearing that anyone who pre-ordered Assassin's Creed Shadows hoping to get early access is losing their early access. And meanwhile, they are dropping the price of their collector's edition version of the game by $50. These sure as hell don't sound like the moves of a company that is feeling good about their projected sales numbers for a game. So. Do you remember what I said about trust? They have lost the trust of the consumer. They, guys, people pre-ordered the game to get early access, and now they've taken away early access. Can you imagine reneging on something like that? So you're not even getting the pre-order bonus that you signed up for. You're like, oh yeah, if you, if you pre-order the game, you get early access to the game before everyone else. Now, oh, yep, we're cutting that out. So why did I pre-order the game in the first place? I could have just waited to buy the game when it came out. You could have, but now you don't have to worry about that. You will, you, you'll definitely be able to get a copy on day one. How awesome is that? Guys, these companies have no goodwill with fans. Only the ponies are going to continue supporting these, jo these jokers. Only the ponies and the Xbox are good. The simps, they're basically, they're simps. It's just a ponies. So basically the, po the, the, the diehard PlayStation fans who basically will support any crap that these companies do. And the Xbox, they're just another form of simp. Just like the INCE INCELs are just another form of simp. These individuals are just another form of simp. And I'll tell you what's interesting. I have simps in my comments who are like, you know, angry. Gender inclusion, like you know, you have to be a simp if you don't believe in ge in 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 uh, in uh, gender 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 inclusivity. Or they'll start they'll start spouting spouting off all kinds of garbage about things, and they'll try to make it sound like they have a point and say that you're actually the simp. Like guys, I told you that's why you have to shine the light on the simps. The simps are the reason why we have all the pain and suffering in the world. With all of our problems disappear immediately if the world didn't have these people or they were put back into the because there will always be simps but they were pushed into the darkness from whence they came no the world wouldn't be perfect but it'd be a lot better than it is now and women would be a lot more humble and treat men a lot better than they are treated in society it'd be a very very different world and guys like i said it'd be much harder to control us much of what happens here because it's it's actually hard to control men it's not easy to control men. Men are actually can be difficult to lead, okay? It's easier to control women than it is to control men. You know, there's a term that's used when it comes to people who are easy to control. Gullible idiots, right? Or useful idiots, correct? They're both gullible and, and idiots, but useful idiots. And men are actually more difficult to control when they have their masculinity intact. They're more likely to say, yeah, I don't agree to this. 
F off. That's the reason why we are spoon fed things like PORN. This is all done by design to keep us complacent. That's the reason why they don't want us working out and going to the gym. They want us to be fat. They want us to be stupid. They want us. This is the reason why they want you to, to just keep on consuming endless amounts of content and don't use your head. They want you to be fat, stupid, and lazy. Fat, stupid, and lazy. That's why when I was 13 years old, my doctor said, my pediatrician, he said, listen, I, I respected the heck out of this guy. And he says, and he knew that he had a lot of influence over me. And he goes, okay, and by the way, television. Uh, yeah, just cut that out. And I'm 13. How you tell a 13-year-old not to watch TV? And his explanation was basically, listen, people who watch television are typically fat, stupid, and lazy. And he was, this was back when I was growing up in like the, this was very early 90s. And he goes, and so basically, he was a silent generation. My baby boomer mother hated him because he basically told me that she was a pro He told me that she was a problem. He told me that I needed to get away with, get away from her when I turned 18 or else she would destroy my life. Because he could see what her personality was like and he could see that she was going to leave long-term scars upon me. And he was one, and, I've, and I was told this by many, many different, I was told this by different people. I was told this by a therapist. Guys, these, the baby boomers are a bad generation. There's something wrong with them. Just like Gen Z, there's something wrong with them. Gen Z is just a reincarnate of the baby boomers, just poorer, all right? The baby boomers have stuck a lot, stuck around for so long, like something out of like a time loop or, or delay out of Rick and Morty, that now they started to respawn. And Gen Zers are just respawns of the boomers. That's why we call them the Zoomers. They're not called the Zoomers because they're fast. They're actually quite slow in many different ways, all right? Physically and mentally. But we call them the Zoomers because they are basically carbon copies of the boomers who are miserable and very nasty people. Absolutely bad people. I imagine this is how the management team at Ubisoft is feeling right about now. Something works, is there? However, those of us who have been warning Ubisoft don't do this. Stop with the controversy and the pandering. Make sure to release games without bugs and just make games that are fun and entertaining right out of the box. Those of us who have been warning them, well, this is how we are feeling at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's funny. Oh, that's good stuff. Anyhow, Yes, Ubisoft has been having a rotten year thus far, which is made all the more horrible by the fact that they were really banking on 2024 being the year that turned things around for them as a company. This decade has actually been pretty bad from a financial standpoint for Ubisoft, as they have lost damn near half a billion euros thus far as they invested heavily into the four huge releases that were supposed to come out this year. In January, Prince of Persia The Lost Crown came out and apparently the sales numbers were abysmal. So abysmal, in fact, that they are rumored to have now disbanded the studio that made the game. Employees were cited carrying boxes of supplies from one floor to another as they quietly reassigned Prince of Persia employees to other projects. In February, Ubisoft released Skull and Bones, and sales on that were terrible as well, to the point that they have heavily reduced the cost of the game. Now, this is really great for me, because this looks like they're going to be on, fi on a fire sale. They're really on a fire sale right now. They've heavily reduced the cost of a lot of their games. And one of the great things is that a lot of Ubisoft games are actually on GOG. Not every single game, but there's actually quite a few of them that are on GOG. Assassin's Creed is on there, the original, and, my, and I'm guessing that it's possible they may start dumping the other ones on there as they become more and more desperate for money. A lot of the Prince of Persia games are also on there. So that's another thing to consider. So, I mean, like, I'm actually waiting for a sale before I go and pick up those Prince of Persia games. But, yeah, those games are actually on sale on there. They're not on sale. They're actually available on there. A lot of the Prince of Persia games. And, you know, as, as they become more and more desperate, as, you know, they'll start listing up these games. And, if they're again, if they're not on GOG, I'm not buying it. But, yeah, I mean, they're going to just keep on dropping the prices of these games. And it's, you know, there's a saying, the consumer is always right, even when they're wrong. 
the consumer is always right even when they're wrong because without the consumer you have absolutely no one and nothing you know i'm looking at gog right now and i could see like the prince of persia games that are actually available there you can see on the screen that there's actually quite a few prince of persia games available there there's the original there's prince of persia the uh the two crown the two thrones the guys there's prince of persia warrior within and then there's prince of persia the sands of time and they're only $9.99 a month. You can see that they're on my wish list because if they're selling for $9.99, chances are when the fire sale hits, when they go on sale, I'll be able to scoop them up for like $2.99. I'm not even playing most of the games I have right now. I have to take a chill pill and be, be patient and be disciplined. Because, I mean, for many of us, what we do is we don't have any time to play games. So we basically are just, you know, going to our collection of games, looking at our collection of games, getting a dopamine from those collection of games, and then going back to work. That's how it is for so many of us, because we have zero time to enjoy life, zero time to play games. But yeah, you guys could see that, like, they have all of these incredible games right over there, and those, and they have others as well from Ubisoft, and my hope is that they're just going to keep on adding more to GOG, because if I don't own it, then I'm not going to buy it. In August, they released Star Wars Outlaws, and when the sales numbers for that came out, the investors had enough, and they began pulling out in droves. At one point, the stock price for Ubisoft was down about 50%. The only thing that made it recover at all was the news about a month ago that the company might be getting bought out. And for those who don't know, the stock price going up a little bit at that point is not a good thing. It means investors believe that they will get bought out and they want to make a quick buck. But anyhow, Assassin's Creed Shadows being pushed back to February 2025 was always a sign that Ubisoft's internal numbers were abysmal for the pre-orders of the game. They knew they had to do something to fix it. Well, how bad must the pre-order numbers be if they are reducing the cost of their collector's edition for the game by 50 bucks? It must be atrocious. They talk about it here in this article from IGN. It says Ubisoft has cut the price of the Japan set Assassin's Creed Shadows Collector's Edition by $50 in lieu of the cancelled season pass, scrapped early access plans, and the game's delay to 2025. The developer confirmed the price drop in a Discord post, telling fans it would now cost $229.99 instead of $279.99 and no longer contain a handful of the bonuses originally announced. Ubisoft was a leading publisher behind the recent trend of offering early access to its games, which many have said is simply about charging fans more money to play often single-player games on their actual release date, and forcing those who stick to the standard $70 edition to wait three extra days. Yeah, that is the sort of thing Ubisoft has become known for. It's basically extortion. If you want to play their games on the actual release date, you gotta pay up. What yeah, that's what more, com more and more companies are doing that with early access where they're like, if you want to play the game on the actual release date, you're going to have to pay up. You're going to have to spend 20 or $30 more just to get early access to the game. And now what Ubisoft has done is they've turned around and people who paid for that early access, they parts they bought the game for that early access. They're not getting their money back, okay? Because they pre you know if you pre-ordered the game, you would get early access. They're like, oh yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. We're just going to keep the money, but uh, you're not going to get you're not going to get the game. You're not going to you're going to get it. And typically with the early access games, they charge like twenty dollars more, so it's seventy dollars. Seventy dollars are no, actually it's more than that. So like eighty nine. 89 bucks like 89 bucks you know or 90 bucks or a hundred dollars to play the early access version and then they're like oh well too bad no early access for you but there's still some other bonuses in there like you're going to get a costume set you get to pay a hundred dollars extra for an additional costume set how awesome is that you get an additional costume set aren't you so happy for that additional costume set it's a forest fire, guys. It's a fire. It's a it's a going out of business sale right now at Ubisoft, and this is what they this is what they get. All right, this is what happens when company go, companies go woke. They go broke, and then they basically start lashing out at their consumer because the consumer doesn't want their trash anymore. Look at what happened to G4 TV.
with Frost after they rebooted G4 TV. And Frost basically said that you guys are getting something for free. We're giving this to you for free. And if you don't like it, don't watch it. So what did, what did people do? They stopped watching G4 and it died. It's gone yet again, and the, the brand that had so much goodwill is destroyed. If they ever tried to bring it back, it would probably be pointless because people now view the brand as toxic. It's the exact same thing that is happening with, so with Ubisoft. People now view the brand as toxic. It's the exact same thing that's happening with Sony. All of that goodwill is being sucked away. And uh, someone said this in my comments where... You know, we all know that what Sony is, is planning to do is like next generation after like, you know, there's tons of competition that comes along. We have these new handheld PCs that are basically able to run like next generation games and something that's affordable and in the size of a Nintendo Switch Lite. And now you have dedicated home console PCs. So basically, you know, with these, you know, you're, you're going to have these steam machines, real true steam machines that you can purchase from companies like Asus and Samsung and so, so forth. And you can basically replace the crappy PlayStation Pro and all that other stuff with these with these devices that will also allow you to do things like upgrade the RAM and so forth and play your play your God games or your steam games. Well. As a result of that, no one's going to be picking up PlayStation anymore. Like, oh, you can play in 4K. So a lot of these devices, you'll be able to play in 4K, okay, or 8K or whatever. And for many people, it's more. It's not even about that. You know, it's about other factors, how well it runs the game and, and so forth. So now they're in a bad place. Now they're in a bad place. They're going to have competition. And then what they're going to do is, you know, we listen. They're going to say, we listen to the fans and the PlayStation the PlayStation 6 is going to be $399. Like, that's really what they're going for. Like, if it gets bad enough, you will see a PlayStation 6 that costs $399. If it gets bad enough, PlayStation 6 will come out for $399. And then if it gets, if things improve, they'll raise it up to $500. You have to remember that PlayStation 5 got massive price increases around the world years after it came out. In various countries, it went up by anywhere from fifty to a hundred dollars. In Japan, it's absolutely abysmal how much it costs right now. Why would you you would even pick this thing up as a freaking joke? And with the Nintendo Switch Two coming out, I don't think the Nintendo Switch Two is going to be five ninety nine. I think the Nintendo Switch Two is going to be three ninety nine because at five hundred, not five ninety nine, four four ninety nine. Because if you if you priced it that way, that high. I think that it would be create a lot of problems for the market. And, you know, it's going to, again, and even with this device, it's going to price a lot of people out. I think that we're, what we're going to end up seeing is a Nintendo Switch, a new Nintendo Switch, two for $399. And then when the OLED version comes out, hopefully Nintendo prices it at $450. So, because that's probably what they're going to do. And then, and then the Switch Lite. Switch Lite 2, which will be something aimed towards young people, towards kids. I think that's going to be somewhere between $250, like $249 or $300. Because even $300 is still a lot of money to plunk down for, for one of these devices. The Switch Lite was a great value because you can pick one up for $200, give it to your kids. And these devices were getting beat up very quickly. But, you know, they were affordable and, you know... They, they're going to need something in that market segment because it's going to leave a big gap in the market where you don't even have a $200 device anymore. We went from like, you know, handhelds like, you know, the Nintendo, like a Nintendo, uh, a Game Boy that cost $100 or a, hundred, or a DS that cost $200 or $170, or $150, now to these consoles, you know, to, to, to now $200 and then $300 and $400. So, they're going to need something in these pricing points and competition. Competition is very good for the industry and necessity is, is one of the things that creates that leads to innovation. Bet, though, that the reason they're lowering the price by 50 bucks now is because a shitload of people are canceling their pre-orders. It's not actually news that there wasn't going to be early access for the game. We've known that this was going to be the case for about a month or so, at the same time that they modified the release date for Assassin's Creed Shadows. So why wait to lower the price? Well, it's because people are becoming disenchanted with the game, I'm willing to bet. The thing is, gamers are winning. 
this obnoxious company who tells us flat out that we have to get comfortable not owning our games. They can't put out a trailer for any of their games without it getting ratioed because gamers have turned on these turds. And now that they are clearly losing support, they want to come crawling back. They've already come crawling back to Steam, announcing that Assassin's Creed Shadows will come out on that platform on launch. And how much did it actually cost for early access? Well, the early access for Assassin's Creed Shadows was originally part of the Gold and Ultimate Editions, priced at $109.99 and $129.99, respectively. I was so wrong. I was so wrong. So the base game was $70, which is ridiculous to pay $70 for that crap. And the actual early access to get early access to the game, it would have cost you $109. So $39, $40 more than the cost of the base game. $40. And that's if you went with the, with the gold edition. If you went with the ultimate edition, then you were spending even you were spending significantly more than that. All right, you were spending sixty bucks, which is basically the cost of a brand new game. So you're spending twice as much for the damn game. Forty bucks more just for early access, and then they say, "Oh, no more early access." So they didn't cancel the gold edition or the ultimate edition. They didn't cancel the pre-orders. They tried to keep the money. But instead, what they what they did do was they can't they 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 canceled early access and they're like oh but you still have all these wonderful features in the gold and ultimate for forty to sixty dollars more, guys. This is like it's like an abusive relationship. All right, guys. If she wanted to, she would. If she wanted to, she would. All right. Once she's gone. Don't ever let her come back. That's how we have to be in a relationship. And even for a woman, if a woman's with a bad dude, don't let him come back. All right? Put those people out. And that's what we have to do at Ubisoft. Put them out. Okay? I have the I have my favorites, all right? I have the games that I used to like to play on Ubisoft. Those games are great. And I still have and you know, I've been picking them up on on Steam, and that's incredible. But beyond that, they can go to hell. Star Wars Outlaws comes out on that platform in about three weeks. They, as a company, Ubisoft is reversing their anti-consumer policies all over the place. But make no mistake, it isn't because they've had a change of heart and suddenly they care about customers or something like that. It's because they are getting wrecked. This is still a dog shit company, and no matter how much they lower the price, I recommend not buying Assassin's Creed Shadows and sending them a message. Like I said right now, guys, this is just growing pains, and this is great for all of us. We have tons of incredible games. There are a ton of great backlogs of physical games out there on the Xbox 360 and so forth. You can pick up a ton of great physical games, dirt cheap, go on eBay, wherever. Definitely we'll see the prices go up and going up in the future. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Okay, but start picking up your games physical. Start picking up digital games off GOG if, you, if that's what you're into. For me, it's Nintendo Switch. And you, so, like, you know, I'll buy one of those cases. And I'll just, I don't give a damn about the about the, the covers, the cover art for these things, for the, the cases for them. Some people do, I don't. It's more about the game itself. So I'll buy like a Nintendo Switch case that can hold 50 to 100 games and I'll just store my games that way and have all of my physical games there. Nice physical game collection. So if they ever try anything, I can play Super Mario Galaxy or I can play any of these games that I enjoy. Any of Mario Kart doesn't matter. I can play all of the games that I enjoy. They can go then. They cannot take them away from me. And that's really it. You know, have a couple copy, have a couple backups of the Nintendo Switch. So, for example, I have my Nintendo Switch OLED, but wisely, I'm going to pick up another OLED. I'm going to pick up another OLED, and I'm probably going to end up picking an, up another light at some point as well. And the reason why is because I'm smart. I love the Nintendo Switch Lite. I think it's a great console, and I think it's a good idea for me to have a backup just in case something happens, and also have to, and also to have a backup of, of the OLED, to have another OLED, again, special edition, just in case something happens, because you don't know when these things are going to become scarce and harder to come by. 
So, and I'm an adult, you know, I work very hard. It's like, what, maybe th it's three fifty, and a lot of them are going on sale right now. Actually, you know what? So the Nintendo Switch, this is something pretty cool. The Nintendo Switch Lite right now, they're ac it's actually getting a sale where you can pick up Mario Wonder. One of the bundles is a Mario Wonder bundle. You get a copy of Mario Wonder with it. Unfortunately, I already have Mario Wonder. I regret picking it up now just because I, I just never really played it like that. And I would have been getting it. It's like $309, somewhere around there. I don't know if it's just for Europe, but there'll probably be some other bundles. It's just what sucks is the fact that I have so many of these games already. I have Mario Wonder. I have... I have, I think, I don't know if I have Paper Mario. I might have Paper Mario. I would, what would be so cool is if they did a Mario RPG bundle, because I don't have Mario RPG. So I'm going to wait until Black Friday, because that's when usually the sales start to pop up. They've been putting out some great sales, so, but so it's like, I feel like Mario, like Nintendo's the kind of company, like they'll put out the best sales in October, and in November they have like, oh, here's another Mario Kart Here's another Mario Kart bundle, but I'm going to keep my eyes open because I would definitely like to pick up another Switch OLED for about $300 right around there. And then a, and then a, and then another, and then a Switch Lite. And you know what? There were some Switch Lights going for like $169, but I'm going to wait again. I'm just going to wait until Black Friday and see if I can get another Switch Lite that way. Because basically we can see what's happening. There's the warning signs are all there that things are not going well. It doesn't matter who wins the election. In fact, as a result of that election, things may very just go very awry, especially if the, the results are contested on both sides, because I can definitely see both sides contest contesting the results of that election. No matter who wins, everyone's people are going to be pissed off and furious. So I say we just have to prepare. You know, I have my I have the tools of my trade. I have my laptop. So I'm going to pick up another one. I'm going to be I'm just I'm building. You know, I have backups for everything that I need. I'm picking I'm going to pick up a. A portable, uh, portable, uh, an energy generator, portable generator. Again, you just don't know what's going to happen. Stock up on things like water and supplies. Stock up on the things you need. Stock up on physical games. You know, stock up on things that you guys, because this is it's hell on earth right now. It's he it's you know, and as men, we have to see that. You know, it, guys, I told you when things went downhill, you're gonna have women going door to door, knocking on door, knocking on doors, like, oh, this is Mrs. So and So. You know, how are you? I have these, ki you know, I have cookies and kitty. Let me in. <laughs> it's like you're like, bro, you need to have your like, don't trespass sign up. You need to have like, you know, your 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 dog in there. Even if you don't have a dog, you need to have like some kind of like. Like, like an audio going like so like the recording so they can at least think that there's a dog there you don't want these people coming around you don't want these people coming around these are people who destroyed society like let you know leave them out there let them you know leave them to their uh leave them to their to, to, to what they have done leave them to the world leave them to the winds of the world they chose this for themselves and let them let them deal with it guys you know but yeah, guys, so this new actress, she's going to be not, she's non-binary. And this is the face of, this is going to be the face of uh, Yotai, Ghost of Yotai, developed by an all-female team. Guys, I told you, what's going to end up happening is a lot of these people, my belief is that are making these games, they're still young people. They're going to go off, form their own studios, start building their games at home, you know, out of their freaking garages. And they're gonna be, and they're and and the teams are gonna be much smaller because a lot of these games in the first place were built by very small teams. Like Horizon Zero Dawn was built by a tiny team, and then it now took on an entire life of its own. And now they've going, they're going woke and all this other crap. Sony bought them out, so they're gonna have these things happening where these com where these people who made these games are gonna start their own companies. They're gonna make similar games, or even a lot of the people who worked at these companies, like the entire teams are just going to form an entirely other studio and they're going to become very small again. And as a result of being very small, we're going to get games that are absolutely incredible. And when they put out these games, many of them are going to be priced lower. That's another thing. Who wants to pay $70 for a game? Don't be shocked when we go back to the $59 price point and you have these triple a games that the, that the major companies can no longer make because they don't have the talent. And we have these triple a games coming out that were originally like like Horizon Zero Dawn and they're being priced for $59 or for 30 or even $39 or in $29 depending on the size of the studio and what how much money they want to make you know and 
it's that's that's a that's a massive deal right there. These studios will not be able to compete. Many of these companies will crash, and they have no goodwill with consumers. You'll have people like Vara Dark screaming and hollering her lungs out, telling you how great the studio is, and to go and support this studio. You'll have people from these new studios who leave, who some of them that worked at these giant studios previously. Or even founded these studios now doing interviews with YouTubers and 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 people and alternative gaming media and basically just having a good time. Like, yeah, man, we left those bastards and we're creating this game and it's awesome. It is for the players, you know. Please buy our game. And if there's something you don't like about it, let us know and we'll try to do better. That's what you say. When a consumer complains, you don't say, don't like it, don't buy it. You simply say to them. You simply say to the consumer, and that's something I've had to learn for myself, because you don't you don't want to you. It's not about if you're dealing with a bastard, then you're just like, get the hell out of here. All right. If you're dealing with someone who just is obviously out to get you and just doesn't want your product and they want to make your life miserable, then you can tell them to just, you know, EF off. But on the other hand, if you're just dealing with a consumer that's frustrated with your product and they want you to do better, they want a better quality product. You know, at some point you have to you have to balance the two because you can't make everyone happy, but you can also listen to the consumer and see what they want and work and go in that direction because the consumer is always right. These woke companies, they went woke and now they're going broke and it serves them right. They need to die off. They need to go away and and they need to be replaced. And that's where we're going to be headed. So there's going to be some growing pains. I just pray that the gaming crash hits as quickly as possible. And of course, it'll be a flash sale. So you're going to have sub games that are going to be going for crap for, for tiny amounts of money while you're going to have other studios that are pricing games abysmally high now because they're absolutely desperate for every nickel and dime. They're already behaving that way. But it will get worse. It's like basically Satan coming out. And you can see this. And guys, there's not going to be any forgiveness for these people. They've basically turned the world into a miserable place. This is the legacy of the baby boomers. And they'll never take any accountability for it. Gen Z is going to be a generation of indentured servants. And serves them right. Because they're really nasty and mean-spirited people. But what do you guys think regarding all of this? The fact that these companies are beginning to die off rapidly. And we're heading towards a gaming collapse collapse but from those ashes and it's not just gaming media in general from those ashes something you will rise and something even better kind of like how we had the gaming crash in the 80s and then you know by the 90s we had a bunch of new games coming and with a lot of in innovation and that brought us into like probably one of the golden ages of gaming because i think the 90s the 90s between the 90s and the the mid 90s and Early 2000s are up to the 2010s. I think those were the golden ages of gaming. We had like a 15-year run, and then after 2010, things started to go downhill. But let me know your thoughts, and we'll talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away. And cheers.